Hello Year 11s and welcome to this video on Consumer Affairs Victoria. There are four things that you need to do while you're watching this video. The first thing is to take the very best Cornell notes that you can. The second thing is to use the pause and rewind functions. Use the pause function if you need to stop this video to take notes. Use the rewind function if you need to go back over any information contained in this video. The third thing that you need to do is to have your vocabulary sheets open in front of you so that you can write into your vocabulary sheets the meanings of key terms or of any other words that you may be unfamiliar with. And the fourth thing that you need to do is have your summary books open in front of you. As we go through this video, I will give you some guidance as to what you should include in your summary books. On this slide, I've set out the two learning intentions for this video. Make sure that you write these learning intentions in your Cornell notes. The first learning intention is that you should be able to describe the purposes of Consumer Affairs Victoria in resolving civil disputes. The second learning intention is that you should be able to discuss the appropriateness of Consumer Affairs Victoria in resolving civil disputes. In class, we'll also be doing a number of learning activities which will help you to achieve these learning intentions. As you know, one type of body that resolves civil disputes is the courts. However, there are also other dispute resolution bodies beside the courts that can resolve civil disputes. In this video, we are looking at Consumer Affairs Victoria, which is one of these other types of dispute resolution bodies. One of the important things that we'll be doing in this video is discussing the appropriateness of Consumer Affairs Victoria and the courts in resolving particular types of civil disputes. We'll go into this in more detail later on, but I'll mention one really important difference between Consumer Affairs Victoria and the courts now. This is that the only dispute resolution method that Consumer Affairs Victoria can use to resolve a dispute is conciliation. Unlike the courts, Consumer Affairs Victoria cannot decide a dispute for the parties by making a binding decision that resolves that dispute. Consumer Affairs Victoria is Victoria's Consumer Affairs Regulator. It's a Victorian government agency that offers quick, free and easily accessible dispute resolution services for civil disputes where a complaint is made by a consumer against a supplier or by a residential tenant against a landlord. Look down the left hand side of your vocabulary sheets, find the term Consumer Affairs Victoria and write this definition in there. Our first learning intention is that you should be able to describe the purposes of Consumer Affairs Victoria in resolving civil disputes. Insofar as resolving civil disputes is concerned, the main purpose of Consumer Affairs Victoria is therefore to offer quick, free and easily accessible dispute resolution services to consumers and residential tenants. In this video, we'll be looking in more detail at how Consumer Affairs Victoria achieves this purpose of offering quick, free and easily accessible dispute resolution services. In an exam or SAC question, if you're referring to Consumer Affairs Victoria, you can abbreviate it to CAV, providing that in your answer, where you first refer to Consumer Affairs Victoria, you write its name out in full and then include the letters CAV in brackets after that name. Our second learning intention requires you to be able to discuss the appropriateness of Consumer Affairs Victoria in resolving civil disputes. In discussing whether Consumer Affairs Victoria is an appropriate dispute resolution body for resolving a particular dispute, there are three factors that you need to consider. In summary, Consumer Affairs Victoria will be an appropriate body for resolving a civil dispute if, first, the dispute is within Consumer Affairs Victoria's jurisdiction, second, the dispute is likely to settle, and third, Consumer Affairs Victoria is a better dispute resolution body for resolving the dispute than the courts. On this slide, I've set out a table that you need to include in your summary books. 
This table sets out each of the factors I've just described in the left-hand column. You'll then need to describe the relevance of each of these factors in more detail in the right-hand column. I've filled out the description of the first factor for you, and I've suggested the first point that you could include in your description of each of the second and third factors. Please make sure that you fill out this table as we work our way through these slides. The first factor that you need to consider in deciding whether Consumer Affairs Victoria is an appropriate dispute resolution body to resolve a particular civil dispute is whether that civil dispute is within the jurisdiction of Consumer Affairs Victoria. That is, whether that civil dispute is within the power of Consumer Affairs Victoria to deal with. The jurisdiction of Consumer Affairs Victoria is set out in various Victorian statutes. And so Consumer Affairs Victoria can't assist in resolving a dispute unless jurisdiction to do that has been given to Consumer Affairs Victoria by one of those statutes. There are two principal kinds of civil disputes that Consumer Affairs Victoria has jurisdiction over. The first is disputes between consumers and suppliers of goods and services where either the amount paid for those goods or services is $40,000 or less, or those goods or services are purchased for domestic, that is, non-business use. In such a case, a consumer, that is the purchaser of the goods or services, can request Consumer Affairs Victoria to assist them to resolve a dispute that the consumer has with the supplier of those goods or services. Uh, for example, a consumer might have a dispute with a supplier about a defective laptop that the supplier has sold to the consumer. This is an example of a good that costs less than $40,000, and so the consumer could request Consumer Affairs Victoria to assist in the resolution of that dispute. Alternatively, a consumer might have a dispute with a house painter about poor quality house painting. Even if the amount paid for the house painting was more than $40,000, which would be quite expensive, the fact that the painting is of a house means that the service of house painting is for a domestic use, and so the consumer could request Consumer Affairs Victoria to assist in the resolution of that dispute. It would be different if the painter was painting an office block, because in that case, the painting service would have been provided for a business use and not a domestic use. In that case, Consumer Affairs Victoria would not have jurisdiction to assist in resolving the dispute. The second main kind of dispute that Consumer Affairs Victoria has jurisdiction over is disputes between tenants and landlords in relation to residential properties. In such a case, a tenant, that is, someone who rents a house, flat, room in a rooming house or caravan in a caravan park, can request Consumer Affairs Victoria to assist them to resolve a dispute that they have with their landlord, that is, the person who rents them that house, flat, room or caravan site. For example, a tenant might have a dispute with their landlord about repairs to the house that they are renting, or they might have a dispute with their landlord about an increase in the rent for that house. Consumer Affairs Victoria also deals with other disputes. For instance, a retiree may have a dispute with a retirement village in which the retiree lives, perhaps about cleaning services. And the owner or occupier of a flat may have a dispute with the owner's corporation, perhaps about gardening services. In such a case, the retiree or the flat owner or occupier can request Consumer Affairs Victoria to assist them to resolve the dispute. But the main types of disputes that are within the jurisdiction of Consumer Affairs Victoria are disputes between consumers and suppliers, where the amount paid for the goods or services is up to and including $40,000, or the goods or services are purchased for domestic purposes, and disputes between tenants and landlords in relation to residential properties. Note, as I've said, that only a consumer or a tenant can apply to Consumer Affairs Victoria to provide assistance to resolve these kinds of disputes. Consumer Affairs Victoria does not assist in resolving disputes where the complainant is a supplier or a landlord. 
It's also important to remember that Consumer Affairs Victoria cannot force the supplier or landlord to participate in the dispute resolution process. It's entirely up to the supplier or landlord to decide whether to participate in the dispute resolution process. And if they do participate, it's entirely up to the supplier or landlord to decide whether to agree to any settlement of that dispute. The second factor that you need to consider in deciding whether Consumer Affairs Victoria is an appropriate dispute resolution body to resolve a particular civil dispute is whether the dispute is likely to settle. This is important because the dispute resolution method that is used by Consumer Affairs Victoria to resolve disputes is conciliation. As you know, conciliation will only resolve a dispute if both parties are willing to try to reach an agreement, which will often require both parties to compromise. In deciding whether a dispute is likely to settle, Consumer Affairs Victoria will look at, and you will need to consider, three particular issues. The first issue is whether the complainant, that is the consumer or tenant, has delayed in making the complaint. A significant delay means that the parties are less likely to be able to settle the dispute because some evidence, such as what was said in telephone calls, may have been forgotten, and other evidence, such as payment receipts, might have been lost or destroyed. The second issue is whether the other party, that is the supplier or landlord, has previously refused to participate in a conciliation. Consumer Affairs Victoria has a database of the parties to all disputes that have been referred to it, and the fact that the supplier or landlord has previously refused to participate in a conciliation suggests that the supplier or landlord is unlikely to cooperate in trying to settle the current dispute. The third issue is whether the complainant has behaved unreasonably, for example, by rejecting a reasonable offer made by the supplier or landlord to settle the dispute. If the complainant has behaved unreasonably, then this suggests that the complainant might not be willing to compromise to settle the dispute. In summary, if the complainant has been slow in making the complaint to Consumer Affairs Victoria, if the other party has previously refused to participate in a conciliation undertaken by Consumer Affairs Victoria, or if the complainant has behaved unreasonably, then this suggests that the dispute is not likely to be settled by agreement between the parties, with the result that conciliation is not likely to be effective in assisting the parties to agree a resolution to the dispute. The third factor that you need to consider in deciding whether Consumer Affairs Victoria is an appropriate dispute resolution body to resolve a particular civil dispute is whether Consumer Affairs Victoria is a better dispute resolution body for resolving that dispute than the courts. If Consumer Affairs Victoria is a better dispute resolution body for resolving the dispute than the courts, then it will be appropriate for Consumer Affairs Victoria to assist in resolving that dispute rather than for the parties to have the courts resolve the dispute. This table compares the advantages and disadvantages of Consumer Affairs Victoria assisting in resolving a civil dispute by way of conciliation with the advantages and disadvantages of a court resolving that dispute by making a binding decision. The first advantage of Consumer Affairs Victoria is that it provides a quicker method of dispute resolution than the courts. Unlike the courts, there's no backlog of cases, and so Consumer Affairs Victoria is able to deal more quickly with the case. The second advantage of Consumer Affairs Victoria is that it provides a lower cost method of dispute resolution than the courts. There are two reasons for this. First, Consumer Affairs Victoria provides its conciliation service for free. Second, the procedures that apply to a conciliation conducted by Consumer Affairs Victoria are much less formal than the procedures used in a court hearing. Indeed, in some cases, the conciliation can even be conducted over the telephone. 
This means that the parties will be less intimidated and more willing to represent themselves rather than pay for a lawyer to represent them. This is very different from the courts where the court environment is very formal and can seem very foreign and intimidating to a non-lawyer and where the complex and technical rules of evidence and procedure apply. So the parties will need to pay for a lawyer to represent them because only lawyers are really able to understand those rules. On the other hand, where a party prefers the structure provided by a court hearing which is conducted in accordance with the rules of evidence and procedure, then a court hearing is more appropriate as a way of resolving the dispute. The third advantage of using Consumer Affairs Victoria is that the parties have control over the outcome because it's up to them to agree a resolution to the dispute. Where the parties do reach an agreement to resolve their dispute, then they should, of course, sign a settlement deed so that the agreement is binding on them. However, conciliation by Consumer Affairs Victoria will only be a better option than a court hearing if the parties are willing to try to reach an agreement, including by voluntarily participating in the Consumer Affairs Victoria conciliation process. If they're not, then a better way to resolve the dispute is to have a binding decision made by a magistrate or judge in a court hearing. That way the dispute will be resolved even though the parties themselves either are not willing to or cannot reach an agreement. The fourth advantage of using Consumer Affairs Victoria is that the Consumer Affairs Victoria conciliation process is private and confidential, which can make it easier for the parties to compromise. On the other hand, court hearings must generally be held in public. The fifth and final advantage of using Consumer Affairs Victoria is that Consumer Affairs Victoria has expertise in resolving consumer complaints against suppliers and tenant complaints against landlords. In fact, it has specialist teams that assist in different kinds of disputes. This is an advantage over the courts where the judges or magistrates are legal experts but not subject matter experts. Another way of putting this is that provided that Consumer Affairs Victoria has jurisdiction over the dispute and provided that the parties are willing to compromise, Consumer Affairs Victoria will be a more appropriate dispute resolution body for resolving small and simple disputes than the courts. This is for two reasons. First, where a dispute is small and simple, the parties will not want to spend much time and money on resolving the dispute. So the quicker and lower cost method of dispute resolution provided by Consumer Affairs Victoria will be very attractive to them. Second, where a dispute is small and simple, the parties are likely to find it easier to come to an agreement to resolve the dispute. The fact that the conciliation is conducted by an expert in private who can make suggestions about how the parties can resolve their dispute will also make it easier for the parties to reach an agreement. Of course, if the dispute is small and simple, but either Consumer Affairs Victoria does not have jurisdiction over the dispute or the parties are not willing to compromise, then the parties will have no alternative except to have their dispute resolved by the courts. In addition, the courts are likely to be a more appropriate dispute resolution body for resolving large and complex disputes than Consumer Affairs Victoria. This is for three reasons. First, where the dispute is large and complex, the parties are unlikely to be able to come to an agreement to resolve the dispute. Instead, the dispute will only be able to be resolved by a court making a decision for the parties that is binding on the parties. Second, where the dispute is large and complex, the parties are more likely to prefer to have the dispute resolved at a court hearing where the rules of evidence and procedure apply and the hearing is run by a judge. This is because the rules of evidence and procedure provide a structure for management of the dispute and because judges are experts at conducting long trials. Third, where the dispute is large and complex, it is more likely to involve complicated questions of law that judges are best qualified for deciding because they are legal experts. 
Well, that brings us to the end of this video. As a result of watching and taking notes on this video, you should now be able to do two things. First, you should be able to describe the purposes of Consumer Affairs Victoria in resolving civil disputes. And second, you should be able to discuss the appropriateness of Consumer Affairs Victoria in resolving civil disputes. As I've said, you'll be undertaking a number of learning activities in class, which will also help you to achieve these learning intentions. Thank you for your attention.